Europe stands at a crossroads. The continent that brought us the Enlightenment, industrial revolutions, and the modern energy grid is now in the midst of a critical energy crisis. With volatile gas prices, increasing energy demand, and the looming specter of climate change, the European Union must make a bold choice. And that choice? It's nuclear energy. First, let's address the elephant in the room, Europe's energy crisis. Over the past decade, the EU has been caught between ambitious climate goals and the harsh reality of energy dependency. The energy crisis that hit Europe in 2022 exposed a harsh reality. When Russia throttled gas supplies, energy prices skyrocketed. German industries faced potential shutdowns. French households braced for blackouts. And in Belgium, people stockpiled wood for heating. This wasn't just an economic crisis. It was a wake-up call. France, with its substantial nuclear fleet, weathered the storm better than most. While German electricity prices hit record highs, French consumers, protected by their nuclear infrastructure, faced less severe risks. This wasn't just luck. It was the result of decisions made decades ago. Take Germany as an example. After shutting down most of its nuclear plants, the country doubled down on Russian gas, only to be blindsided when supplies were cut. The result? Sky-high energy bills and a desperate return to coal, the dirtiest fossil fuel of them all. Europe's over-reliance on imported fossil fuels has left it vulnerable, and renewable energy sources, though promising, aren't yet reliable enough to fill the gap. This is where nuclear energy comes in. Let's talk numbers. The EU aims to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55% by 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. These aren't just ambitious targets, they're necessary ones. But here's the catch. Renewable energy alone won't get us there fast enough. To replace all fossil fuels with renewables, we need to cover an area the size of Hungary with solar panels or fill a landmass larger than Germany with wind turbines. And that's assuming perfect weather conditions year-round, which we know isn't realistic. Nuclear energy is often misunderstood, but here are the facts. It's one of the most efficient and low-carbon energy sources we have. A single nuclear reactor can produce as much electricity as hundreds of wind turbines, and it does so 24-7, rain or shine. The Gravelines nuclear power plant in France, for instance, produces enough electricity to power 6 million homes. That's more than the entire population of Denmark. Nuclear fuel, such as uranium, packs an enormous punch. Just one kilogram of uranium can produce as much energy as 10,000 kilograms of coal. This means less mining, less transport, and less waste. Unlike solar or wind power, which depends on weather conditions, nuclear power plants provide a steady, reliable energy supply. This is critical for industries, hospitals, and households that can't afford blackouts. When it comes to emissions, nuclear energy is on par with renewables. According to the IPCC, nuclear power's life cycle emissions are comparable to wind energy and much lower than natural gas or coal. The ghosts of Chernobyl and Fukushima still haunt public perception, but here's what most people don't realize. Modern nuclear technology has evolved dramatically. The new generation of nuclear reactors, like the European Pressurized Reactor, EPR, includes passive safety systems that would prevent such accidents even if all power and human intervention were lost. Take Finland's 3 reactor, which began commercial operation in 2023. It's designed to withstand a direct aircraft impact and includes multiple redundant safety systems. This isn't your grandfather's nuclear technology. It's the result of decades of engineering advancement and lessons learned. Nuclear waste is often cited as a deal breaker, but this is largely a problem of perception. In reality, all the nuclear waste ever produced could fit on a single football field if stacked a few meters high. Advanced technologies like reprocessing and fast breeder reactors can even recycle much of this waste into usable fuel, reducing the problem further. 
Critics often point to the high constructive costs of nuclear plants. And they're not wrong. Building a nuclear plant is expensive. The Flamanville 3 reactor in France, for example, has faced significant cost overruns. But here's what those headlines don't tell you. Once operational, nuclear plants have very low running costs and can operate for up to 80 years. When we factor in the lifetime costs, including construction, fuel, operation, and decommissioning, nuclear power often proves cheaper than fossil fuels, especially when we account for environmental and health costs. The EU's taxonomy decision to classify nuclear as green investment has opened new financing opportunities, potentially reducing these initial costs. Beyond the environmental and economic benefits, Nuclear energy offers Europe something equally critical, energy independence. The EU currently imports about 60% of its energy needs. By investing in domestic nuclear infrastructure, the EU can reduce its reliance on foreign fossil fuels and insulate itself from geopolitical shocks. During the 2022 crisis, countries that invested in nuclear, like France and Sweden, were far less affected by gas shortages than their neighbors. By going all-in on nuclear, Europe can secure a stable, homegrown energy supply that's immune to international conflicts and price manipulations. But the story gets even more interesting when we look at the future. Small modular reactors SMRs, are revolutionizing the industry. Countries like Estonia, which previously couldn't consider traditional large reactors, are now planning SMR deployments. These compact reactors can be factory built, reducing costs and construction time dramatically. Fusion, the holy grail of energy, is closer than ever to becoming a reality. Projects like ITER, based in France, aim to harness the power of the sun here on Earth. While fusion won't be ready for mass deployment for another couple of decades, it's a testament to the potential of nuclear science. Public opinion is shifting. Young Europeans, particularly those concerned about climate change, increasingly support nuclear power. Countries like Poland, once skeptical, are now planning multiple nuclear plants. The Netherlands has announced plans to build two new large reactors and multiple SMRs. So, what needs to happen? First, the EU must streamline nuclear plant approval processes while maintaining strict safety standards. The current system, where each country has different requirements, increases costs, and delays construction. Second, we need standardization. The success of France's nuclear program in the 1970s and 80s came from building multiple identical reactors. This reduced costs and simplified maintenance. The EU should encourage similar standardization across member states. The choice facing the EU isn't between nuclear power and renewables, it's between a clean energy future and continued fossil fuel dependence. Countries like Sweden, which combines hydropower, nuclear, and wind, shows how different clean technologies can work together. The technology is ready. The knowledge exists. The need is clear. The only question is whether the EU will seize this opportunity to lead the world in clean energy deployment. For a continent that gave birth to the scientific revolution, split the atom, and created the world's largest single market, going all in on nuclear power isn't just an option, it's a continuation of Europe's greatest traditions of innovation and progress. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.